Hello, welcome to Winning Classroom Management, a web series designed to help you restore the joy of teaching. So this episode is about belonging. My name is Aaron Daffern. I'm an educator, an author, a coach, and a trainer. Remember, in this web series, Winning Classroom Management, there are four keys to restoring the joy of teaching because learning requires a solid foundation, much like this oak table will only stay standing and lift up these books, which represent learning, if all four legs are strong. So we're looking at the first of the four keys in this web episode, belonging. Why is that so important? So belonging, first let's figure out what it is. It is defined as an affinity for a situation, a location, or a group. So we all feel belonging in various places. We might feel like we belong at our school. We might feel belong, we belong at our church or at our favorite restaurant. We might have an affinity for um, a situation. So we like doing certain things or even a group of people, family members, friends, neighbors, coworkers. So belonging is, is when you have that feeling of, I belong here. There's an affinity. There's something that is good between me and this situation. I like the emotions that it brings up or me in this location or me in this group. The groups that people belong to help people understand who they are. So a huge part of our identity is the groups that we belong to. So I am a father. I am also a husband. Uh, I am also an educator. I'm also a disc golfer. I'm also a sports fan. So all of those groups help inform me of who I am. And which social identity is active kind of changes based on the situation. And that will end up impacting my behaviors. So if I am at a Cowboys game, I'm going to act a little bit differently than if I am at church. And those are both two identities that I hold, but my behavior will shift based on which identity is active. And I feel like I belong both at Cowboys Stadium and at church. So when a group identity is activated, like I said, it can affect people's goals, emotions, and behaviors. Think about all the different places you go, all the different groups you slide into and out of. Your behavior changes slightly because the expectations for those groups change. And so people conform to the behavioral norms associated with the active group identity. Think about your children if you've got school-aged children. And sometimes they will act a certain way and be laughing and talking and cutting up. And then they see you and then their behavior switches as you're coming to pick them up because they know that a different activity identity is being activated. So we know that belonging is important and belonging relates to our affinity to these situations, locations, and groups. Here's the point with this slide. What if we were to get our students to feel like they belong in our classroom? And what if every time they walked into our classroom, a certain set of behaviors activated because they know what's expected in that classroom. They felt like they belonged to your classroom. And when they feel like they belong, they will meet the behavioral expectations and the norms that are set up in that classroom. Now, those norms have to be clear, have to be consistently enforced, but we can avoid some of these classroom management struggles that we're fighting right now simply by doing a good job of creating a sense of belonging so that when a kid walks into your classroom, they feel like, I belong here. I know what is expected of me here. I might be able to get away with yelling out in Miss So-and-So's cl class, but not here because I belong here and there are different expectations here. So what are the benefits of belonging? So the brain is an electrical structure, right? So we have all these neurotransmitters in our brains and two that we're really looking for are oxytocin and dopamine. So connection produces oxytocin. So when we connect with others, when we are in relationship with others, when we feel like they are emotionally on our wavelength, right? We get that oxytocin released in our brain. Dopamine is released by pleasurable activities, whether it be exercise, whether it be completing a task, right? When we complete something and when we are engaged in something that we like, we get that dopamine. So together, this neural cocktail of oxytocin and dopamine 
that's what we want released in our classroom. We want them to feel like they are connected to the classroom. We want them to feel like there's a pleasurable activity, i.e. learning, happening in the classroom because it's those two neurotransmitters that provide the fuel to help them handle increasingly rigorous cognitive loads. Learning is hard, learning is risky. We wanna stretch students. So in order to do that, we have to provide their brains with fuel. The fuel is oxytocin and dopamine, and that comes from connection, and that comes from the curiosity and just the pleasure that comes from engaging in fun, interactive learning. So there's two components to belonging in the classroom if you want to break it down into component parts. One would be relationships. That is going to be our second uh, key for uh, restoring the joy of teaching. So we'll talk about that in the next web episode. But relationships are very, very important. A strong teacher-student relationship provides a secure attachment. It helps children feel like they have a safe harbor from which they can explore the world. So if you want to build belonging, you're going to have to focus on relationships. But secondly, if you want to build belonging in the classroom, you need to help build a group identity. What does it mean to be in your class, in Miss Johnson's class or Mr. Smith's class? Does that have any meaning? Is there a shared experience? Are there values? Are there beliefs that are consistently modeled to develop that identity of the classroom? Or is your class simply one of eight that they go to in the day and... You could be replaced with a substitute and the students would never know. So is there a strong group identity? And that typically is going to come from the shared experiences because your kids will be there every single day. But leverage that. What are the values that you hold dear? What do you want students to do and how do you want them to be in your classroom? Because entering a classroom can seem risky. Even at a young age, students are subconsciously asking themselves on the first few days of school, do I fit in here? Should, should I even want to belong in this group? Some of you have students that have been on your roster all year long, and yet they've never belonged to the classroom. Simply being on the roster does not mean they belong. Belonging includes acceptance, inc includes a shared belief in what the norms are for behavior and what the goals are of that classroom. But students are asking themselves, do I even want to belong to this group? And if I do, what are the expected behaviors Ultimately, what does it take to belong? In some classrooms, the, the way to belong is to be really nice and to help others and to show pro-social behaviors. In other classrooms where the teacher hasn't done a good job of setting behavioral norms, the way to fit in is to cut up, to act out, and to try to be the class clown. There's always different ways to belong in a classroom. You as the teacher get to set some of those norms. So belonging, how do we build this sense of community? Here are three different strategies that we can use to build belonging. This is not an exhaustive list. It's meant to just get you started. First, we've talked about it throughout this whole video. Establish healthy norms. Be explicit. Tell students exactly what you want to see and why those behaviors are important. But more importantly, they will do what you do, not what you say. So if you're not going to model the norms, don't establish them. So if you are going to ask students to be respectful, you need to model that respect. If you are um, modeling or wanting to tell kids to always be prepared and always be ready for learning, come prepared with your lesson. Don't be fumbling and, and don't be winging it because kids can tell when teachers aren't prepared for the lesson. So one way to build belonging is to establish healthy norms. You're drawing a line in the sand saying, this is what it takes to belong. Come join us. Secondly, Use collective re rewards. So as a true team, the class should succeed together to meet certain milestones. So rather than rewarding individual students, try collecting the class, right? So if the class gets a, a certain average percent maybe on a test or could even be behavioral, right? It, couldn't be, it could be a certain number of days with perfect attendance. Let the class win collective rewards and you're going to build that identity of we did this together. And collective rewards are going to be more powerful than individual rewards for individual students. Honestly, the easiest thing probably to do is just to start speaking in the first person plural. Rather than you, your, it's we, it's our, we did this. Just start using inclusive language. 
And after a while, the students will start picking up on this. We did this, right? This happens every Monday in the in the NFL football season, right? If your team wins, we did this. We won the game. We did this and then we scored. Even though as a fan, we didn't do anything to influence the outcome of the game, we use this inclusive language because we're excited about it. Unless the team loses and then it's they, they, and they. So if we build these uh, first person plural pronouns into our vocabulary, we and are, we can also help build belonging. So human connection powers the brain. That is the first key to winning classroom management and restoring the joy of teaching. And if you have any other questions, you can find me at my website, aarondaffron.com, or email me at aarondaffron at gmail.com.